Welcome to Children's Liturgy of the Word. My name is Tish, and that's my husband, Mike. Hello. And today we're celebrating the baptism of the Lord. And so we'll explain more about that later as we go. Okay, we're going to start with the prayer. Okay. God in heaven, you sent down your power and your spirit on Jesus to be the light of the world. Lead us by that same light so that we may see where we have done wrong and find the way to be happy with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Okay, we'll do the first reading, huh? And the first reading is the reading from the prophet Isaiah. Our God says, this is my servant, my chosen one. I give him my strength and my spirit to bring justice to all the people. And I say to him, I, your God, have called you. I have taken you by your hand. I have sent you as my covenant to the people, as a light for the world. I have sent you to open the eyes of the blind and to free those that are in prison and to give light to those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, let's do the let's do the response. Repeat after me, okay? I praise you, O God. I praise you, O God. For your faithful love. For your faithful love. I praise you, O God. I praise you, O God. For all that I do. For all that I do. Very good. Now we'll do the gospel acclamation. A voice from heaven said. A voice from heaven said. This is my beloved son. This is my beloved son. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Okay, very good. Now we'll do the gospel. And the gospel is the reading, the good news, and it's a reading from the gospel of Mark. And for the gospel, we do what? That's right, we stand up on our reverence and honor, and then we make the sign of the cross how many times? Correct, three times. So we start off up on the forehead, up and down, and then across. And we do that because we're asking the Lord to open our minds in a sense to understand what's being read. Because sometimes it can be very hard. Then over our lips, we go up and down and then across. We do that because we're asking the Lord to help us remember what we learned. So we might get the chance to tell someone else what we've learned and they might not know yet. Then over our hearts. We go up and down and then across. We do that because we're asking the Lord to help us remember to be more friendly and neighborly to everyone we meet this week. Now we listen to the gospel. When John the Baptist preached, he always said, someone else is coming after me who is more powerful than I am. I am not worthy to undo his sandal strap. I am baptizing you in water, but he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. During that time, Jesus came from Nazareth and was baptized by John. As soon as Jesus came out of the water, he saw the Spirit coming on him in the form of the dove. Then a voice from heaven said, You are my beloved Son. I am pleased with you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Go and have a seat right where you are. Okay, so I'll explain the first reading, and Michael's going to explain the Gospel. And then the first reading, God told Isaiah in the conversation that he was sending a servant. Now, the servant he's talking about is Jesus, okay? So... Isaiah is prophesying. He never met Jesus. 
So he's prophesizing about Jesus. And he, Jesus has strength in the spirit by God so that he can do things like justice. He brings justice to the people. Also, he made a covenant with the people, a promise to the people to, to be his savior, to be the light of the world. Okay, and what Jesus did while he was on earth, and it was prophesied, he opened the eyes that were blind, he freed those that were prison, and he gave light the, for those that were in darkness. Okay, and sometimes people are blind, not physically blind, but they're blind because they don't know about God. But Jesus made that they know about him. Sometimes people are in prison. They're not free because they don't have God in their life. You know, and God, Jesus came so to give light, okay? And it explains, like, people are in darkness because they don't have the word of God. They don't know God. But Jesus came to give them light to tell about them. So what, would, what did you get out of this? Well, we get out of this that Jesus came to, for us to learn from him. But what he taught us is to love God above all things, because God does everything. Without him, we are nothing, you know? And also to love our neighbor, to take care of them, to make sure they have, you know, if they need something, to give them if we can. And so... These are what we were reminded from the readings today. In the gospel, we again talk about John the Baptist. Um, John the Baptist, last week we kind of talked about him a little bit, um, and uh, announcing. You know, here uh, he's announcing that uh, I'm not the chosen one. Uh, the one coming after me is the one. And it's on this particular reading that Jesus shows up. And as he shows up, um, this is when they see the dove and comes down. And that was the sign of the Holy Spirit. And we use that symbol even to this day. But the bird pointed down as the Holy Spirit. But this one was God saying, this is my son. Listen to him. Okay. And so it affirming confirming that he's the one, okay? So all those people heard that, and so did John the Baptist. So then everyone was to follow Jesus. So John the Baptist's job was kind of done then, okay? So it reminds us a couple things. One, that Jesus was confirmed into his thing. And then if you think about what do we do in our church? When you're in high schoolish age, you get confirmed, kind of like Jesus. He got confirmed that he was going to do what God needed him to do. Well, we do the same thing when we're in high school. We know right from wrong then. We have a good idea, a sense of things in the world and stuff. And so we get confirmed that we too will try to do like Jesus did. Okay. And then the other aspect is, dear John the Baptist, uh, he was announcing Jesus is coming and now his job is done. So God used him kind of a short term there. And gee, what else can I do for you, God? So sometimes we have things that we do and it takes a while to do these things or it's more continuous. And some things we do to help out God are very short or one time or uh, quick. And then we have to say, Lord, is there anything else I can do for you? Just let me know, you know, or let me help. So Different uh, things. So this is when John the Baptist now announces that Jesus is the one that's coming. Okay? And uh, we just celebrated his birthday not too long ago. Huh? So we don't talk too much about when he's a child. Uh, but because he's just kind of like us, doing and learning all the stuff. Uh, but then we jump to here to get all the lessons and to learn what we're supposed to do like Jesus did. Okay? Okay, so we have a saint. So we'll bring that saint and let's see here if you can see that. Okay, so this is my 
Okay, so this is St. Hilary, and we're celebrating January 13th. And St. Hilary, he was a bishop and a doctor of the church, okay? And he was around the year 315. He died, and he's dedicated to country France, okay? And he was a, a patron saint for protection against the saints, okay? So that's St. Hilary, okay? Okay, let's say the Apostles' Creed all together now. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay? Now we'll do the prayers of the faithful. Okay. We pray for the church, for Pope Francis, for bishops, priests, and deacons, religious, and all who serve the people of God in love and faithfulness. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. We pray for our parents and family members who love us and care for us. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. We pray for our parishioners who may be sick or alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Then we pray for anything that you think of, whether you're at home, in the car, or outside. If you see or you uh, hear of someone uh, that needs a prayer or something, simply say it to yourself. And we ask the Lord to hear it and answer it as quickly as possible. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Well, thank you so much for coming. It was so good to see you. We look forward to seeing you next week. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Tell a friend. The candle light reminds our soul to live like Jesus will. On fact.